In this video, we will discuss differential sequence mining. Uh, this is extension of uh, SPM. So, differential sequence mining is trying to identify the differentiating the behavior between two groups by using the patterns, like the patterns identified in a SPM algorithm. So, we can actually use the statistical test to identify whether this difference between these two groups is statistically significant or not. So, that will help you to make up claims better, right? And uh, if you want to know more about how this differential sequence mining is uh, used, how it is started, please read this paper, uh, 2013 paper from a Journal of Educational Data Mining. Okay. Let us see what is DSM. I will try to explain with a very simple example. Okay. So, there are group A, group B. Uh, consider group A is uh, in your class. Uh, students from uh, one section is group A, other section is group B, you are teaching the same course, all the students are equivalent, consider all the assumptions are carried out and you did all the tests to make sure everybody is equivalent. Or uh, within the same class you can split into two groups and you are giving this kind of intervention. You are asking them to interact with the MOOC or you are creating a simple uh, learning environment where they have to watch video, read some GUI pages to answer some questions, uh, they are free to do everything and uh, they are free to navigate in the particular environment, you ask students to solve a particular problem. Then you captured all the log actions like the reading action, quiz actions, and log using log data. Then you want to identify the difference in behavior of the group A versus group E. Uh, it is very simple to identify the behaviors differences by if you have a pattern mining. Let us see. The group A did read PDF read to quiz 10 times, uh, consider this is I frequency median. Okay. And uh, imagine the S support is equal and say 0 0.8 for both, okay. 0 0.8 or 0.6. Um, N is not important here, consider the N is also equal and say 30, 30 or something like that and S is 0.8. Consider the N is 30 in both. and the S support is 0.8 or above. Okay. So, your I frequency it can be a median, let us say it is median, not a mean score. Okay. So, you have this uh, median values, I frequency values. Uh, this read quiz occurred 10 times, you have occurred only once to this particular uh, once or average or median value 1. And quiz to watch video occurs 9 times here or 2 times and quiz to read occurred 2 times here, but quiz to read occurred uh, 9 times here and uh, simulation uh, to quiz occurred only thrice, but simulation to quiz occurred 4, it is kind of equivalent. Can you identify the difference in behavior between these two groups? Uh, it is obvious that this group had more read to quiz. So, can you identify the other differences in these groups? So, that is activity, uh, it is easy to identify, I am just already I gave the answers. You can talk about which uh, uh, patterns occurred more frequently in group A, which pattern occurred more frequently in group B, which pattern kind of occurred similarly in both groups, that is what I want you to think. So, there are 4 patterns classified into 3 groups, a pattern which occurred more in group A, a pattern which occurred more in group B, a pattern which occurred in both groups. Okay. After you list down, uh, assume the video to continue. So, uh, it is simple, uh, group A had a pattern uh, read to quiz uh, and the quiz to watch video, uh, these two 10, 9 compared to this group, this is simple you can compute. And group B, it is uh, read to quiz occurred more uh, compared to group A, read to quiz and simulation to quiz occurred kind of both groups. Okay. This is a, a basics of dif differential sequence mining. It is very simple if you have only uh, two groups, only these patterns is easy to identify. But if say if I have to use the statistical significance test on this particular, um, particular uh, patterns and differentiating this, I want to see is there any statistically significant difference between these patterns occurring more in group A compared to group B. 
if you want to do that what you have to do you remember the i frequency uh, we computed use this value to compare the statistical significance uh, let us say this for the read to quiz suppose there is a value read to quiz for a group A it occurred 1 uh, not 1 now 10, 8, 11, 9, 12, uh, 7, 6, 13 it occurred in this kind of sequence and for group B it occurred in something like this. There are two sequences you can use these two sequences to create the statistical significance just like a t test or a man with t test. So, uh, you have to be careful which test you want to use ok. So, it is not a normal uh, it would not be a normal rise to value. So, maybe you might use man with you uh, think about that uh, that is not part of this course, but yeah just go and read it just for fun understand which test to use on which kind of data and the statistical significance. So, yeah, so if you have a statistical equivalent used on that then that may tell a better value, uh, but we will have a tool um, to help you to do that ok. So, that is the basics of differential sequence mining. So, let us see the same paper which we discussed uh, we saw that in a last class in a bit more detail. The paper we saw in last class uh, same set of actions I want to go back to the same table this is what happened here. So, what happened? Um, there, there are like um, 24, there are around 40, 50 students who worked on uh, individual, there are around 24 groups who worked on uh, collaborative group. You can read the paper to understand the exact number and uh, there is a difference between the frequency. Suppose collaborative group uh, have this more compared to the individual group. So, they computed the man with new test to find identify whether this occurrence is significant or not. So, this particular occurrence is significant, this particular pattern occurred more in collaborative group compared to individual group. Similarly, for these three patterns occurred more in collaborative group with a statistical significant difference. And these two pa three patterns occurred uh, more in uh, individual group compared to the collaborative group and these patterns occurred on both. With these table, these values, you can make a new inference on behavior difference between these two groups. For example, you can say that collaborative group students mostly had a supportive uh, link and take a quiz and they remove that ineffective links. Compared to individual group students, they simply read, 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 which never occurred in the collaborative group, which occur, which occur in very less frequency. So, individual support group who do not have someone to talk they are simply reading, reading, reading and trying to understand the meaning on their own. Whereas, collaborative group students will be uh, do not need to uh, read much because they can collaboratively work together two students are working in a collaborative group uh, two or more. So, they are talking and they are understanding they are able to solve the sums easily. So, individual group might be always asking query and explanation they may be asking uh, agent A hey, what is this ask the agent to talk because they do not have anyone to talk. So, they will be asking agent a lot of questions that particular behavior is more pro, no, dominant in individual group compared to collaborative group. So, these kind of behaviors will tell you how to create inference from this particular patterns and uh, there are some of the patterns which occurred for both that also tells what is the common behavior between these two groups. If you are conducting studies say in a class of 60 students you want them to work on online environment and you do a pre-test and post-test and based on the scores if you want to classify them as high scorer versus low scorer you can create as a two group high scoring students, low scoring students. Then you can run a pattern mining based on the reactions to see is there any uh, behavior differences. In diagnostic analytics we try to understand why student got less score compared to the other students who got low sc high score. Here we are not trying to predict anything instead there is one group who did really good. What is their behavior? What is the interaction behavior in the system compared to the students in the low group or what is the behavior the low group did very good, but high group students is not able to do. This kind of analysis diagnostic analysis can be done using simply the pattern mining or differential sequence mining. Hope you understood what is SPM and DSM in the last two videos. And uh, we do not give a tool for uh, DSM instead we give the frequencies, the values, high frequencies. So, use those values and compute your own uh, DSM uh, behavior and compute your own um, 
uh, statistical significance test. Uh, since the data is not uh, normal, I will suggest Man with U is best to use. But there are a lot of tools available in online to compute Man with U. So go ahead and check uh, the tool this week and uh, uh, compute uh, some patterns from using your own data, uh, create your own data and test it out and uh, read about which test significant test to use like Man with U, why and um, apply it and understand what is SPMN data. Thank you.